monastery for many years, in a Buddhist monastery, and uh, that's what we were taught, how to sit meditation. And uh, it's described in very uh, detailed, uh, you know, how you hold your tongue, how you hold your eyes, how you hold your body. You work, it's basically yoga, you work on your mind by working on your body. You start out with observing your breath, counting or observing your breath. That sort of calms your mind down a little bit. But the mind goes on all the time. It's like, uh, you know, it's like uh, the glands produce hormones all the time. So the brain produces thoughts all the time. In the night it dreams and it's non-stop. And there's no problem with that. That's basically the function of the brain. Um, but the problem is that we get so um, it's so convincing to us, we are so attached to the contents of thinking that we forget the fact that we are thinking. So we are really uh, fascinated by the contents. We move into a space that uh, is not so dominated by conceptual thinking. That's usually the prison we are caught in. We are identified completely with our thoughts. And our thoughts are, of course, part of us, but uh, they are uh, really only a fairly small portion of our whole being. But it's so dominant that uh, we tend to uh, not see the rest of it. So a lot of a good part of the meditation is to quiet down the mind or to let, make it uh, more uh, that it doesn't block out everything else. A mature person, I think, is somebody who keeps these two things in balance, uh, that can, while doing the ordinary work of washing dishes and, and, uh, and uh, changing diapers, uh, you do not forget that uh, this is an expression of the Absolute. You are connected with the Absolute. And on the other hand, while you are uh, in deep meditation or experience some uh, ecstatic state, uh, you do not forget that there is a world that uh, needs you and, uh, and that you have to be part of that world also. For sure, some things will go on, you know, there's, in this world there's nothing that is destroyed or created, it's always a change of everything, so it, uh, there's no reason to think that this, the, the consciousness will be the only thing in the universe that ends, but it's more likely that it too will change into, like the physical parts of the body change into uh, various things, and uh, I think the mind probably will do something similar. And then there's the world that you can enter already while you're alive, that is beyond, and that was never dependent on, on, on this body. Uh, obviously will uh, um, last or survive the destruction and the coming of the body and going, coming and going of the body. Mm -hmm. 